Well, how do you there, champs? As I, Captain of the Steers, and today, champs, for you guys in the viewerverse, I'm going to be jumping over and looking at the latest development update. The Nightingale! Okay, so let's jump on over onto the actual PC verse. Let's go and hit on up this development update. You can see here it only dropped 18 hours ago. So let's jump on into this. Let's just give it a quick pause. Let's make sure that it's on the highest graphical setting possible. All the way up to there, chicka boom, lovely jubbly. And uh, yeah, let's make it full screen. Let's just, we'll turn off the old Winamp just for a second, people inside of the view of Earth, shall we? We'll just hit pause on there. Lovely jubbly, and uh, let's hit play. And uh, let's make sure we've got the volume right up, people. Hey, you Realm Walkers. Welcome back to another developer update. Today, we're focusing on the latest play tests. So how it went, what we learned, and the resulting next steps. So first, let's do a quick recap of the playtest itself. This was by far our largest playtest to date, as over a period of 10 days, we saw over 8,000 people from 61 different countries explore the realms. Fun fact, the longest playtime by a single realm walker was 137 hours. So to any of you out there that are watching this and you played in the alpha, thank you so much again. So you may be wondering what the main objectives were with this playtest. Well, we had two main ones. The first one was to see how all of our systems could scale up with 10 times the amount of players. And then the second was to continue to get feedback from our players as to the aspects of the game that they continue to enjoy and the parts that need improved upon for their early access launch. This was especially important this time as players had significantly more time to play so they could get to later parts of the game. So let's start off with the positive changes and the feedback from players. We continue to hear from returning playtesters that the game is improving with each playtest, and many players continue to enjoy the sense of immersion caused by the aesthetics and the audio design of Nightingale. Some new encouraging callouts are that people really enjoy to traverse the realms with climbing picks, which we decided to give them early on in the game so that they could traverse the Fey Wilds in ways that isn't very common in survival crafting games. Another comment we got was when you're creating your estate blueprints, uh, our UI now shows how many resources you need to complete it. Various players appreciated not having to do the math and I feel you, I hate math. <laughs> An exciting and new thing about this playtest was that playtesters can now check out the new in-game starting point, the Nightmare Realm, which I love the title of. This new realm has its distinct design, it has additional bits about the lore and the setting, and this is now where you select your realm's starting biome. We also opened up new difficulty options where players can choose their starting loadouts, as well as the difficulty level per realm. So if you wanted to start off with nothing but your skivvies <laughs> and take on the more challenging creatures for resources with higher stats, you could do that. But if you wanted to take a more leisurely stroll with starting gear through easier realms, that's also a possibility. You don't have to do it in your undies. <laughs> and well, I quite like that. That's a little bit more in keeping to the Elden Ring type franchise, isn't it? I guess. Last but not least, definitely not least, I'm excited for this one because I know how many of you really want this. Here is third person mode. What? <laughs> yes! That's what I wanted. I needed this. This is brilliant. Awesome. This mode was highly experimental for this playtest. But for those who are prone to motion sickness, or Not simply me. prefer it, the option was there for playtesters to check it out to let us know how it felt. The default and priority mode in Nightingale wow. is still first person, but we know that this could be a very important accessibility feature for a lot of you. So we really hope to have it ready by the time we launch in early access. 
The reason why I feel this is quite important is you've got this Victorian garb going on and you are going to meet other players inside the realm. It's nice that you can see and form that bond with your character in the way that they look. I just hope that the character customization and how you make yourself look in game is a little bit better than what we've seen so far. I mean, as nice as some of the characters look inside the trailers, over on the Discord there has been some sort of feedback that some of the character models in the actual choice system as your defaults are pretty ugly. We have a couple of other highly requested features that are still in the experimental phase, so we're super excited to share those with you when they're ready. Cool, cool. Pretty darn nice testing systems. As Here we go. As previously mentioned, a really important part of this playtest was testing our systems and how they scaled so we could uncover any issues now rather than at early access launch. Firstly, let's talk about Discord, where we were communicating with the majority of our players. So previously, we've been able to rely upon a third party bot, which would give people verified roles so they could see all the channels that they needed to. Unfortunately, it couldn't handle this volume of players. So we had to last minute rely on both a homebrew bot as well as manually verifying users for over a thousand people. This won't be an issue at launch as our Discord will be open to all, but we thought it was a hurdle worth mentioning nonetheless, as it was a sense of frustration at the very beginning of the test for our play testers. And then when we initially opened up the gates, our servers hit an initial issue. Our networking team was all hands on deck, and after a thorough investigation, they discovered a very obscure setting, which would limit how many concurrent realms could be spun up at a time. This meant that if you're one of the people that started off earlier, uh, you could get into the realms and play just fine. But if you tried to get in later than that, then you were you couldn't load into the game. This particular issue was identified, investigated, fixed, and pushed live within only a few hours, thanks to the hard work of our team. But it does go to show you how important this playtesting process is, as it's one less issue for us to hit at launch. And I love that. I like the fact that they're ticking off issues before they even happen. Very proactive team, this. And I'm, I'm loving these development feedbacks. I so wish other game developers did this sort of thing and interacted with the community in this sort of way. It's, it's awesome. Another thing that caused a small hiccup was pushing a live patch to players for the first time during a playtest. This was done so our team could practice uh, bringing the servers offline pushing an update to players, and then reopening the servers after the fact. In just a couple of days since the playtest had started, we were able to introduce some quality of life changes for players. So things like decrease how fast the hunger bar went down, we temporarily turned off realm curses that were causing some players to get motion sick, and we were also able to address some bugs which were causing some of the crashes that some of our players were seeing. The good news is, is this patch didn't cause players to lose progress, and our servers were able to start up again just fine. This patch only had one or two days of testing, unlike when a game is usually already launched. The downside of having such a quick turnaround time is that it did ship with a bug, and this would lock players out if they interacted with one of our new experimental systems that we introduced in this playtest. Players were quickly alerted to this issue, and it was hotfixed out the following day. This kind of patch was definitely an extreme case scenario due to playtest time constraints. When the game is live, our patches will have significantly more time with our QA team to come through it before it's pushed to you, our players. These issues, alongside other feedback, bug, and crash reports, are all vital in our preparedness for early access. We're still working through some of the remaining issues from this playtest. We are really proud of our team who worked through a lot of these challenges during the test. And we're very thankful for our community of playtesters who largely took these things in stride. So thanks again to those of you who stuck with it. Liking this, I'm liking this a lot. Looks so like they're listening. So what's next for us at Inflection Games? We still have outstanding work to polish before launch, like ensuring bugs and crashes are resolved as much as possible. We'll also be working on replacing placeholder assets and finishing animations. We're also working to address the constructive criticism that we received in this last playtest, as well as previous playtests. Some key areas here are things like working on balancing the game so that the building and the crafting don't feel like a grind. Improvements to progression pacing so that players don't feel overwhelmed in the very beginning of the game. Refine this is something that I feel really needs to happen with a lot of games, to be honest. Now, the fact that they're trying to work on balancing and a lot of the feedback has come from balancing is great. I mean, yes, it could be a survival crafting game, 
but some people, myself included, I would like to see the realms, the procedural greatness that this game brings and the beauty of it. And if you're going to be grinding and building massive great big houses in realms, it almost ties you to that. I know it's a respite realm, but at the same time, for me, it's about the exploration and moving forward, seeing those mega faunas and interacting with the magical world of Nightingale. Yeah, uh, I think base building for me is going to be very much secondary. But if it actually pushes it on you that you have to do the base building, it could take away from my enjoyment. So hopefully the balancing, hopefully it gets addressed. Mining our UI so that progression paths are a little bit clearer, as well as overall making the game more intuitive. We're also looking into which quality of life features uh, will be put in for early access versus post-launch. This includes things like adding the ability to hold down your mouse button or your controller button to continuously uh, do an activity such as mining or harvesting, adding an offhand slot for like umbrellas or torches and stuff like auto item pickup, um, just to name a few. So what does this mean for upcoming playtests? Well, well, for me, I'm a console gamer and I like the fact that it's got haptic feedback. When you are cutting down a tree or doing whatever, at least you get the haptic feedback. On a mouse, you don't get that. So you're clicking, 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 clicking. I don't know about you, but I get RSIs. I'm a little bit of a whinger, aren't I? But there we go. Anyway, I'm glad to hear that there's an auto hold down feature. We'll be definitely holding another one in a not so distant future. We don't have the exact details such as dates and times, but definitely keep an eye out on our official channels such as Discord, and we'll update you guys there um, when we have the details. And that's it for our developer update. We have Brilliant. a lot of future community comms planned, so make sure that you follow all of our channels in the description so you can stay up to date. As always, thank you so much for joining us on this journey. We can't wait to show off more of the game with you all. Until then, we'll see you next time. Well, thank you very much, Inflection Games. Pretty awesome. Right, anyway, let's jump back over to me, and I might as well turn back on my old Winamps. There we go, people. And then let's, let's get rid of that black cube there that's there right now. Anyway, people, so yeah, I'm very, very excited for Nightingale, if you haven't already guessed, and you haven't seen my other videos. And if this is the first time you're hearing about Nightingale, it's an amazing game. The thing that I like about this the most is the procedural element where you can actually create your own world on the opposite side of a portal by using realm cards. They look like tarot cards, but you put like three or four of them into a machine and it opens up a portal based on the tarot cards you've used. It looks freaking great. I love the actual idea, love the premise and can't wait to jump in and actually play this game. It's definitely on my radar. Really like Maribel there inside of the video. She was wearing a Back to the Future t-shirt. Don't know if you saw that, but freaking awesome. My very first skateboard was Back to the Future and had the same sort of text on the bottom and that retro vibes. Anyway, that's everything I've got for you on Nightingale. If you haven't heard too much about it, look up my other videos on Nightingale. This game is going through development cycles. They're giving decent feedback and they're listening to feedback. Love it. Communication is key when you're launching a new game. Heck yes. Until next time, people. Salute to Mondo. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.